Well, we're taking a little break from fishing this week, but what we're going to be learning about is definitely fishing related. Let's see how some people are volunteering their time to make the Chesapeake Bay a better place for underwater habitat. Obviously, these guys are not fishing right now, but what they are doing could improve their chances of catching fish in the future. They're making concrete reef balls, and we've certainly seen evidence that reefs improve fishing as well as marine habitat wherever they are placed. This reef building program is the Living Reef Action Campaign, which is part of the Coastal Conservation Association of Maryland. We've been running this program for about uh, five years throughout the state and always just work with community and students and volunteers to, to build reefs and learn about the importance of habitat and uh, make some great fishing spots. We always want to engage communities to understand what's happening out in the water. So much of what happens under the water is out of sight and out of mind. You know, as anglers, we know how to find spots to catch fish, but you don't really understand what's happening down there from an ecological perspective. So we want to educate folks about that. Uh, we're teaching some different skills. A lot of the work we do in this program is in schools, uh, elementary students, middle and STEM programs. So we're teaching them construction skills. They're, they're you know, assembling a mold, mixing concrete. Um, and then ultimately just understanding kind of our impact on what happens in the bay and you know, ways to be responsible anglers or just responsible citizens and you know, helping to inform people what's, what's out there and why it's so important that we take care of the bay. These volunteers from Straight Edge Construction may not be learning any new skills, but they are looking forward to the results of the work they are doing. Yeah, yeah, I love to fish. Any, any free time I have, I like to get on my boat, get out in the Tanger Sound, catch rockfish, whatever else I can get into. So figured this was a chance for me to improve the fishing habitat um, and improve the health of the bay overall. So I was excited to get involved. Brian Sheets and his crew will be assembling the molds for the reef balls, mixing concrete and filling the molds with the concrete. And the plan is to put them in the water next spring. The idea is that we're building the, the internal structure of that, which is a concrete dome with holes in it. Uh, reef balls are used throughout the world. Uh, the Reef Ball Foundation is the one, are the ones that created them. They're an important partner of ours. So they create a hollow space for these fish to live. Um, as anglers, we always think about the fish we want to catch. Mm -hmm. but we also have to pay attention to the fish they eat, the things that are living around them, and that whole ecosystem. So this Reef Ball really gives a really firm foundation for that. While many of us only think about the fishing possibilities associated with artificial reef systems, it really starts with the bottom of the chain before working its way up. You know, an oyster is a key filter feeder. Um, there's a, they're really the foundation of all life in portions of the Chesapeake. Um, we're part of the system in many different ways, and um, oysters are truly the foundation. Our reefs are so important. Um, all these species here are somehow connected to the reef, even the waterfowl. You know, folks that love the waterfowl, birdwatch, they're eating organisms off these reefs. And when you see what one of these reef balls looks like after a few years in the water, when the oysters attach to them, creating a living reef, it's easy to see why they work. Anybody that's ever fished around an oyster reef, um, they can see that and go, oh wow, there's gonna be life there. Um, we call a rockfish a rockfish because of an oyster rock. You know, it's one of the, one of the reasons uh, the striped bass, our state fish is called a rockfish, so. And oysters really are the foundation of a healthy marine habitat. And having more will hopefully lead to a cleaner bay. Three-dimensional reefs are really good. They get really good water flow. Um, oysters are one of the key pieces of the puzzle in removing nutrients that end up in the bay through eating algae um, and really just being aware of what's out there so hopefully maybe they get engaged to go out on the water and fish, become anglers, become sportsmen, or just understand what's happening out there and they can make different choices at the seafood market or you know whatever it might be. As for the fishermen out there, if getting covered in a little bit of concrete can improve your chances of finding fish, volunteering a few hours of your time is definitely a no-brainer. It's only going to make things better, that's for sure. I'm kind of excited to see, you know, we're going to drop these at James Island Reef and keep an eye on them over the next couple of years. It'll be interesting to see what grows out there and how things improve. And hopefully our relationship with the Chesapeake Bay will continue to improve. Not everyone is going to agree how, but we can all agree how important a resource it is. So this is really just a continuation of engaging folks that have some sort of connection to the outdoors care about it and it's just one more step in the right direction and you know we're a big team we're in it together um, it's never easy to, to sort out natural resource policy and such that we do but you know we're still in it together and so the more people we engage with the better and 
especially in years like this where everybody's been kind of stuck in limbo.